There's been a few iPhones since the iPhone XS dropped in 2018, from the iPhone 11 to the 11 Pro and the recent $400 iPhone SE. So the ultimate question right now is, is the iPhone XS worth getting in 2020? Well, my name is KJ OS and this will be my revisited review of the iPhone XS. Let's get this party started. A quick one before we get started, I'm on my way to 1,000 subscribers and it's been great if I can get there in great time. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. Also hit the bell so you can get notified when I drop videos like this every week. Also, I finally created a Patreon account for my YouTube journey. So far, it's been a great journey. I've had fun, I've had so many things, but at the same time, it's been kind of hard getting access to certain gadgets and certain, de and certain devices that I want to review. So your donations will go a long way helping me out to create better content for you guys. Well, the link is in the description below with all the information that you'll need. And thank you guys in advance for your patronage. One of the things I love about the iPhone XS is the fact that I can reach all corners of the phone with one swipe of my finger. I use this and the Pixel 3 XL every now and then, but I find myself switching my SIM cards from the Pixel 3 to the iPhone of just how compact it is. All corners of the phone is easy access and it just reminded me of how much I love 5 inch displays. The screen is a Super Retina OLED panel with a display of 5.8 inches and a 2.9 screen to body ratio and a, and a resolution of 1125 by 2436. In direct sunlight, it's bright enough so you have no issue seeing your screen when outside and Apple can thank Samsung for those nice OLED panels. The glass back is something I've never really liked. I mean, you see the design that is at the back of my phone. Apart from being a bit fragile, it's the most slippery phone in the entire world or at least on par with the Samsung S10 and the S10 Plus. So remember to get a case for it and a screen protector to avoid having this beauty looking like this. Even with this little dent at the back, it supports wireless charging and also fast charging, but you have to get the fast charger separately as it doesn't come with it in the box. Also, it's rated IP68 dust and water resistant for up to two meters underwater for 30 minutes. By now, you already know that the iPhone Tanners doesn't have a headphone jack, and you're very correct. There's not been a headphone jack in an iPhone since the iPhone 6 or the 6S. So if you want to charge your phone while listening to music in a very seamless manner, you need to get Bluetooth headphones or you can get AirPods from the, from the Apple Store. Now, from the speakers itself, it has stereo speakers and they're right at the bottom. It has two speaker holes, but only one works. The left speaker hole is pretty much ornamental and it really houses an extra antenna band. It's not as good as the Pixel 3's front-facing speakers, but it does the job pretty well. And for the specs, for those it may concern, the iPhone XS is rocking a 4 gigs of RAM with the 8 12 Bionic chip, has an internal storage up to 64 gigs to 512 gigs of memory. Now, has it held its own over the couple of years? Uh, it's kind of a 50-50 kind of thing. So on one part, 75% of my day, the phone is smooth with no issues. But once it reaches that 20% mark on my battery, it kind of starts lagging, then it resets on its own, which I don't know why, maybe future updates will actually help with these things. But for now, it's kind of dampens my experience with the phone itself. Now, speaking of battery life, whew, I can, my facial expression should actually tell you what it is. It has a 2,658 million pounds of battery. And after a few years, the iPhone XS still holds its own when it comes to how long you can carry it throughout the whole day. With my battery health at 88%, I can comfortably get five to six hours, seven hours if I'm even pushing it, of screen on time. This is Wi-Fi on, brightness at 100%, my WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram, playing Injustice 2, amongst other things. Now the phone has held its own over the last couple of years and I can say I'm really impressed with the battery that it has had. I can solely recommend this phone just based on the battery life. Six to seven hours of screen on time depending on your usage. Some may get less, some may get more, but the battery life of the average user is very good and I can recommend this to anybody that wants to buy the iPhone XS. Currently I'm on iOS 13.5. The iPhone XS still gets frequent updates and is on course to get iOS 14 when it comes out. It's still a great operating system that makes the phone very user-friendly. It's also the same things we've come to expect from the iPhone. Nothing has really been unchanged. It's the same UI, the same features from what we already know, but iOS 14 is on the horizon like I said, but it's currently in the development beta stage. So once it goes public, I will install it on my phone and let you guys know if it's worth getting at all or if you just wait for the official one that comes out later this year. The dual cameras on the iPhone XS are both 12 megapixels, but the main camera is f1.8 while the second is f2.4 for portrait mode. It also has a quad LED flash. No ultra wide or no night mode on this phone, which judging by today's standard is not the most dynamic camera setup in a phone. 
However, it still does the main function properly, which is taking great photos. HDR is good, which improves the color science when you're taking pictures. It also has a good dynamic range. Low light images are pretty good, but like I said earlier, no night mode. So if you're out late at night and don't have the best lighting, your images might not come out the way you want them to. I've said this many times before, but the iPhone still has the best video cameras in their phone and the XS is no exception to that rule. It shoots at 4K at 60 frames per second, plus stereo audio recording supports the speakers. So you have a very good camera setup, especially if you're a content creator. So in conclusion, is this phone worth getting in 2020? And the answer is yes, it is. Even though it came out in 2018 and is the bigger brother to the iPhone X, the iPhone XS still holds its own in today's smartphone market. Now with the current pandemic and the um, border closures and the exchange rate going up, this is a phone you should look at if you don't want to break the bank so much. It has a great camera, it has a great build quality, has a great battery experience, and it more or less gives that iOS Apple experience that everybody wants. So yes, this is a phone I recommend to anybody and everybody watching this. And that's it, that's my take on the iPhone XS. What are your thoughts? Is it worth getting or do you want to get the iPhone 12 or do you want to wait for the 11 or the 11 Pro? Comment below and let me know. And if you like this video, clicking the like button is the best way to help me out. And if you're new here, you should please consider subscribing as I release videos like this every week. And the best way or the best time to see them is through a subscription. Thanks for watching. My name is KJOS and I'll catch you guys on the next one where we talk all things tech.